Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters. for us this morning. We were looking for houses here and I knew the first thing we we're going to do is to get chicken because I just love them. <laughs> for me they are my pets. <laughs> Elvis, leave your sister alone. They lay eggs through the day. Oh she just laid, look it's fresh from her body. It just came red. We're, we're primarily a place of education and, and bringing community together and, and showing them how you can compost and that brings life to your garden. I'm Brazilian. I arrived in this country eight years ago. We used to live in Peru, so I studied at Le Cordon Bleu to become a professional chef. I'm extremely grateful for that. And we were there for two and a half years and then we came here. I grew up here in Wisconsin. I'm from the West Dallas area, so I've been really blessed to travel the world. And there is really no place more beautiful than Wisconsin. We have 60 fruit trees going on in the farm. It's Milwaukee apple. It's actually native. We always leave 20%, 30% to the birds, to wildlife, because they are so hungry. So we put a comfrey in the middle of the trees because this plant put a nutrition and the soil that those trees are taking from the soil. So it's like a perfect marriage, like Chris and I. <laughs> I love that plant. So many people have come into our property for the very first time and said, you have a different energy here. This year we've transformed to a farm stand, so you know, we're growing and then we're carrying our produce down and, and gonna make it available for the community. This is just too cute. It's cute. Coming out here, 20, 25 minutes outside of the city, all the sense of society kind of feel like they are relieved. Hey, hey. Nice meeting you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Oh my goodness, my pleasure. So this is two girls on a farm. Would you uh, walk me through oh, the, the operation? I will be honored to. Great, Come let's on. go. So here we have our chicken coop. What I really love about this coop is it's so open. And then we put the eggs right here. I will show you how gorgeous nice. they are. Yeah. I actually separate three dozen because I want you guys to go back with eggs. We do not wash them okay. because if you don't wash them, they last longer. Yeah. So people just come here, collect their own. They feel like part of it. That's yeah. the beauty, you right. know? Right yeah. We kind of put some rules just to remind people that's their house. And the first rule is be kind to the chickens. The second is do not chase them. <laughs> Contain your emotions. <laughs> <laughs> and only pick eggs with permission. Sure. And then my lovely wife reminded me to put a please up there. Because I'm like, re oh, uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Please respect the rules <laughs> and thank you for coming. But uh, they lay their eggs right here. And uh, in this coop, everything is reused. And we convert it to their nest. And we have our ducks. We have three female ducks. One is broody. You can see she's protecting her eggs. Sure. She doesn't understand we don't have a male duck, so she's <laughs> not going to become a mama butt. That's okay. <laughs> you can't blame a girl for trying. Right. <laughs> That's Elvis Presley over there. Yeah. Look at his he hair. He is a hunk of hunk of burning right? love, isn't he? <laughs> and that's behind you. It's Bob Dylan. Hey, Bob. The most. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> we put those letters that we found on the garbage, people's different garbage. That's why Chris doesn't like me to go out with the truck. <laughs> because I come back. Because you come back with more yes. than you left with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. But the chickens appreciate. Yeah. And then 
So they hang over here and we also have a beehive over there. So let's go see the beehive. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's do it. Oh, I see a few back here. Yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I started just to learn because I wasn't really familiar with it. But then we understood how important, you know, it is and uh, for pollination. We don't even collect the honey because it's just one hive. Mm -hmm. And they work pretty hard for their food, so we just sure. leave it over there. Sure. <laughs> but mostly for pollination, yeah. Our trees produce much more. Our garden produce much more because of those bees. Cool. What's next? Well, so we're going down to see the part of the orchard and then we can finish by the gardens. Great. Okay? This is exciting. Yeah. yeah. So we have pawpaw trees, we have apricot trees and the edges, and then we have apples, and then we have pears, and then we have cherries in the middle. And they all have their time to do their thing. They're still young. Sure. Yes. You know. And obviously the comfrey, which I love. But that's the comfrey. That's the comfrey. Isn't that a beautiful plant? It is a beautiful plant. So that's the perfect marriage I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Many people who work with permaculture just adore that plant because mm -hmm. especially when you done harvest you just take the plant and kind of sprinkle all over and that's kind of like what a green beans does to the soil put it the nitrogen back you know yeah. so that's uh, pretty much what a comfrey is doing over here that's very cool so you you start this process from scratch yes yeah. and all by hand sure and i knew i wanted to have something like this something that i can build the soil i can grow food for local community you know i can teach people the connection between your plate and nature you know three days was actually the first house we sought <laughs> and then we were coming up to the driveway my heart told me this is the place my wife took a little longer i took a little longer <laughs> i confess <laughs> you couldn't even see the ground because yeah. the weeds inside the white fence here the weeds were taller than we were this whole area was covered with weeds that's incredible. Um, so nothing existed here five years ago. Yeah. That's a lot of progress in a short amount of time. Yeah. You named the invasive weeds. <laughs> <laughs> we still oh, probably yeah, have exactly yeah. the case still. study. Like. <laughs> yeah. I want to stop you for one second. Okay. What's the difference between soil and dirt? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> uh, we depend on soil. You know, soil makes your water better, makes the plants grow better. It's yes, life. It it's full of life. We have microorganisms living here. You know, those microorganisms, all those insects, they are the farmers well, because they are responsible for the food to grow and the compost to biodegrade eventually and become soil. You know, so it's a whole difference between dirt and soil. Soil has life. I'd love to walk through it. Shall we? Yes, please. It. We don't have a fancy gate. We no fancy our... gate? <laughs> no. That's cool. No. <laughs> Just like this. What are we looking at? So over here, we have peppers, all kinds of peppers. And then we have some herbs, cantaloupe, watermelon, yellow squash, zucchini. Then we have our tomato patch over here. There we have kohlrabi. How much of the food that you make is indicative of your background in Brazil and Peru and, and, and now coming to Wisconsin. And Brazil, we do use a lot of herbs, you know, like cilantro and uh, parsley. Without herbs, it wouldn't be what it is, honestly. Sure. That's kind of like the soul of the food. Yeah. You know, garlic <laughs> and herbs. And it lifts everything it up around does. it. It does. Yeah. People kind of like, when I'm cooking, I can see their faces, you know. It's like <laughs> I'm putting all those herbs in there like, oh, but that? Don't you think that's a lot? And I'm like, just, just relax. Hey, go sit down. Go sit down. <laughs> and then, but when they get to taste, you know what I mean? And you actually ended up using less salt and less of, you know, those processed things because the beauty mm -hmm. of those life ingredients. Yeah, flavors. it's intricate. So, so yes. Special. My mom, she is a great cook. So I always try to never forget about my roots you know i always like my rice is definitely her rice yes. absolutely i obviously i put in some the french technique that i had the privilege to learn but it's still the same way that she did it so yes i do keep that alive i don't want to forget about my roots at all of mm -hmm. course not of and course. with this accent how can yeah. i <laughs> Polly, Chris, thank you so much for having us on your farm today. It's a story of hope, and uh, I am so honored 
to be here, to see this, to share in the energy and the love and the passion that you're, you're cultivating right here and the community. I can't wait for you to come to Viroqua and, and oh. come hang out. I think you're going to love it. Okay. Maybe we should make a paella. Oh mm-hmm. my God, I love I have, paella. I have huge paella pans and we can yeah. light a fire. Oh, that would be awesome. So right now, I'm going to Luke's house in Viroqua. Viroqua. <laughs> and we are going to cook together a delicious paella. And I'm so in love with this place. This is amazing, my first time here, and I can't even describe. The fauna here is amazing. Hey, how's it going, Polly? Better now? Yeah, you found us. I did! (laughs) Welcome, (laughs) thanks for coming out. Thank you for having me, I'm so excited. Of course, look at this, do you think this is gonna work? Oh my goodness, this is beautiful. (laughs) That's great. Look at that. I know. Wow. I'm I brought some things from the farm. What do you got? Let me see. This is like Christmas, the big reveal. <laughs> so I just brought some dried mushrooms. Dried That's mushrooms. That's obviously not from the farm. Okay. <laughs> but I like some it. Some herbs, parsley, Beautiful. and cilantro. Yeah. Ooh, that smells really good. And I brought some beautiful colorful peppers. Look nice. at this. Gorgeous. Hand-picked. One day before I came here. Really? <laughs> and some tomatoes. Some tomato. Oh my gosh. Oh, and the garlic. Obviously. You brought your Brazilian garlic? Yes. I hope. So I kind of thought today um, we would use uh, this beautiful weather and uh, it is beautiful. You know, the situation being behind my house here uh, to put together some paella. Mm. If you want to start, like we could start dicing the Absolutely. onions and slicing the garlic and we'll get the peppers broken up. And I, in the meantime, am gonna put the paella pan over the fire here. Sounds great. When your mom made paella, did she use a pan this big? The house that I grew up, we had like outside stove, kind of similar, but it made out of clay Mm -hmm. and stones. So that's how she cooked her beans and her rice. So everything kind of had like that smoky yeah. flavor. Oh God, oh, that that's amazing. why I want one at the farm. Yeah, I bet, <laughs> I bet. And so kind of part of what we were thinking today with this is uh, we're gonna make a few adaptations. I have some Wisconsin ingredients. Uh, you brought some of the ingredients from your farm that are you know, relative to Brazil. We obviously want to be respectful of the tradition around paella and the cultures that uh, you know, bring, brought that to us. But at the same time, we have room to adapt and shift and Absolutely, move. Absolutely, yeah. So I've got some, uh, actually, uh, I've got some beer brats over here. Mm. I've got some uh, Wisconsin Spanish chorizo, um, a Calabrian three-way, like a three styles of Calabrian chili in there. Can you talk to us, Polly, about what paella is? What, what are we making today? So paella, and you please correct me if I'm wrong, is a Spanish dish. Uh, but actually, Spanish people kind of fight a little bit with Valencia people because it's between those two, right? But it's a rice dish and it's also a very, a very family dish where everybody shares and it brings a lot of different meat together. Mm-hmm. And back in history, people who used to walk for the rich, they used to take the remains and make at their house. Mm-hmm. Kind of similar what it happened in Brazil. Mm-hmm. So that's what is fine for me. It's just a rice dish with some animal, yeah. um, you know, products on it and just delicious. I love rice. Yeah. So whatever with rice for me is great. So but for me, uh, cooking just, it makes me feel more human, mm-hmm. more connected to earth sure. and grounded. Right. Oh, that's amazing. How does the perspective of being a farmer now, um, you know, kind of marry with those feelings? Oh, I honestly, I love growing my own ingredients um, for so many reasons, for taste, Mm -hmm. uh, environment purposes. Yep. But uh, it's actually my heart. Sure. It's right there. Yeah. Dirt with every seed. And um, yeah, being a farmer, it was a gift from the universe oh, later in life. All right, do you want to put a little bit of olive oil? Absolutely. Uh, in the bottom of that paella pan? Absolutely. All right, chef. Let's start 
Adding the ingredients. Yeah, let's start by, I'm gonna actually, I have these beer sausages. You wanna start the, the sausage first and then the... Yep. Okay. And then we'll sweat everything else down with it. Oh my God. I know, right? It already smells great. That smells delicious. Oh my God. So this is some chorizo. This is a, a dried chorizo, not a fresh chorizo. But it has color. Mm -hmm. It has color. And flavor. And flavor. But it's a cured chorizo. And I want to put this in also so it sweats with the vegetables. Mm. And that's a little bit of a different texture. I'm going to open up now uh, some of the underground meats, Spanish chorizo. But... I'm going to come in with this stuff if you don't mind. Oh, please. Here we go. So we've got this pork we're adding in now. Mm. Now we're going to have some color here. Right. With all those chorizo. Now, do you know the uh, technique for adding the rice? You tell me. I've always been told okay. that whenever we're adding the rice, you have to do it in the symbol of the cross. Oh, really? Because that's like a Spanish Portuguese yeah. thing, right? Like that's very, that very, very divine. And it, you're like bringing the divinity into the actual dish. I don't know if that's how you roll. That's not, you know, like. That's how I'm going to roll now. <laughs> exactly. You always put it in in the sign of the cross. Yeah. Take no chances, you know. You're, I want to learn. <laughs> now I want to do it. All right. Okay. Here we go. Whoa. <laughs> I will complete. I will Thank you. Down. There it is. This awesome. is cool. Right? I didn't know about the cross. Yeah. Love it. All right, sister. Let's Come. go with that stock. All right. Yeah. We're going to add a little bit of wine. We'll add a little tomato, that acid, which will help kind of break things down and it'll soften all the yeah. flavors. Okay, so let's, let's add some salt. I wish everybody could smell this, right? So this is saffron, right? This is Spanish saffron. But there's a flavor that's associated with saffron that's very, very unique. And I think it's one that like, if we're going to pay tradition to some of the cultural building blocks of paella. We should have been, yeah, we should have sure. them. We put beer brats in. We're doing this in Brazilian style with your Brazilian garlic and, and your beautiful Brazilian perspective and then Spanish saffron. We're gonna go splitsies on this, right? Yeah. Like you're gonna eat half and I'll eat half. I'm gonna drop some of this fresh thyme in here. You know, thyme is one of my favorite herbs. Give me time. <laughs> We've got most of the building blocks in. I'm gonna go with a little bit of crushed red pepper flake here. Just like a, a handful of it. And Polly, if you would, let's get a little rosé on this. Now, the awesome part about using wine like this is it actually will cook the alcohol out. So you'll just have yeah. the residual sweetness and a little bit of the acidity. Actually, one of my favorite parts about cooking paella, honestly, is kind of like the guessing game of which ingredients go in when. We want to make sure that the ingredients that spend the most time in the pan are not going to actually overcook, overcook right? Yeah. So a lot of those aromatics, the vegetables, that the hard chorizo, the dry cured, all those things take time to cook. And that's great. We have time with this. But the shrimp... It's minutes. Yeah, the minutes. And, and the fresh herbs, we want those to be last second additions so we can ensure that everything gets done at exactly the right time. But we can add the peas. We can add the peas, yep. It just gets more beautiful. Yeah, green, red, yellow. Oh, there's that crust yeah. coming up. Okay, so we're at the point now, like this is almost done, right? We know that there's a crust forming on the bottom with the rice. We can see that the top rice is already like cooked. It's al dente right al now, dente. but we're close. So I'm going to add these beautiful, colossal, uncooked shrimp. We're going to get these in here. I'm going to lay them right on top. All right, so we're at the point where these colossal shrimp are cooking up. I'm going to go a little bit over the top here. We're going to add just a couple more shrimp. Is that cool? Please do. Okay, great. Love shrimp. I know that you're a seafood lover. Yeah. Mm. There we go. Uh, yeah. And we're going to let those kind of come up here for a little bit. All right. And then last but not least, some of those delicious herbs that you brought. Let's put it. Cool. I feel sometimes like I am combining 
all of these elements of storytelling into one big, beautiful dish. Quite a bit like the paella. And if there's a metaphor to be had from this program ever, it's that this cultural conglomeration is symbolic of all of us. We're all in this same pan together and we've got different perspectives and stories that flavor it and accent it like these individual ingredients, but when you put them in there together, we all become one. We become one big universal paella. I can't wait to taste it. Food brings people together. Yeah, I totally. love that. That's, that's an inspiration. I know. <laughs> that's why we're doing this. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. So look at that. Oh it my crusted. goodness, thank you. Yep. I got the first. <laughs> there we go. You want to go more shrimp, side? <laughs> so Polly, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for sharing your beautiful ingredients with us, your story, you and, you're in Chris's farm, your time, your energy. We appreciate you. Thank you for Thanks. having me. Have a wonderful, wonderful place. Yeah, this is beautiful. Thank so you. So kind to have you here. Thank <laughs> you. So happy. Thank you. Mm. Shall we? Mm hmm. So good. Mm. That's perfect. Mm. Mm -hmm. Brought to you by Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> and it, actually, can't lie to him. Pick him up. I'm gonna take a picture with you. Get it? I'm actually horrible taking pictures. Seriously, you got the camera pointed the wrong way? Are you gonna get the paella back there? How about you do it? You're better. Oh, no? I'm better? Yeah. The paella. Oh, there it is. Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following <laughs> underwriters. The dairy farmers of Wisconsin are proud to underwrite Wisconsin Foodie and remind you that in Wisconsin, we dream in cheese. Just look for our badge. It's on everything we make. At Organic Valley, our cows make milk with just a few simple ingredients. Sun, soil, rain, and grass. And grass. And grass. Yeehaw! Organic Valley grass milk. Organic milk from 100% grass-fed cows. Employee-owned Nugler's Brewing Company has been brewing and bottling beer for their friends, only in Wisconsin, since 1993. Just a short drive from Madison, come visit Swiss Wisconsin and see where your beer is made. Wisconsin's great outdoors has something for everyone. Come for the adventure, stay for the memories. Go wild in Wisconsin. To build your adventure, visit dnr.wi.gov. With additional support coming from The Conscious Carnivore, from local animal sourcing to on-site, high-quality butchering and packaging, The Conscious Carnivore can ensure organically raised, grass-fed, and healthy meats through its small group of local farmers. The Conscious Carnivore. Know your farmer. Love your butcher. Feeding America Eastern Wisconsin is the largest local hunger relief organization in the state. With your help, we ensure your neighbors in need don't have to worry where their next meal may come from. Learn more at feedingamericawi.org. Additional support from the following underwriters. Also with the support of Friends of PBS Wisconsin.